Okay, this is an example of how to adjust a traverse. Um, this should help you in understanding, you know, what a closed traverse is, um, understanding the, the notion of using your survey measurements to determine the quality of your survey, and finally, if the survey is of sufficient quality, can you move forward and make small adjustments to account for uh, the likely impact of random error. So what we have here is a five, I'm sorry, a four-side traverse. And you see here we have points A, B, C, and D. And we know for each of these points, we know the, um, the bearings from one to the next and the distance. And again, one thing to think about, we're talking about a traverse, we're talking about plan view or horizontal coordinates. So there's no elevation built into here. All of this is, is distance in the horizontal plane. So for example, from A to B, is a south 68 degree 5 minute 35 second west bearing. Um, we don't have coordinates in this one. You could certainly, um, but by knowing the bearings and the distances, we can determine relative coordinates. Uh, if, for example, if you set A as 0, 0, then B would be a negative northing and negative easting um, coordinate based on the uh, northing and easting component. In other words, the northern component and the easting component of that line segment. So that hopefully orients you a bit. Let's go through and, and answer the questions associated with this particular closed traverse. So the first question is, in order to collect the bearing and horizontal distance information presented above, what did the field surveyors have to have access to at the beginning of the traverse survey? So in other words, this data here didn't magically appear. It's based on collecting data in the field. Um, and in order to do that, in order to be able to determine bearings and horizontal distances, you first had to start with two known control points. Because I can't shoot from A to B and know it's a south 68 degree bearing, southwest 68 degree bearing, if I didn't know if I wasn't able to measure this with respect to some known bearing. So the answer here is, I w and this is the case in any survey, I have to begin with two known points. Um, in this case, you know, I, I could argue and say I don't really have to have Z, but I still need two known points in order to provide the foundation for the northing and easting components of my survey. So first question, uh, I've got to start with two known points in order to conduct a closed traverse survey. Okay, so um, I need to turn off my email so you don't get these messages. Okay, um, so next question. Next question: If my total station was located at point B, and you use point A as a back site to zero the horizontal angle, what would be the horizontal angle you would turn clockwise when taking a shot at point C? So, in other words, here's what we're talking about: My station is located right here at B. I back site to A, and then once I get that site, I push zero the horizontal angle on my total station. Now what I'm going to do is turn my total station from this orientation all the way to here, where I have someone standing here at C now with a prism. So another way to think about this is when I first started at B, the other person in my survey party was sitting here at A with a prism. I aligned it with the prism, zeroed my angle. Now I told this person, hey, walk over to C, stand here. When he or she does that, now I turn my station from pointing this way to pointing that way. Okay? So that's what happened, and I want to know what is the what is this angle that got turned to get from, from B to C. So I have a diagram here illustrating that. Um, again, A to B or B to A, excuse me, has a 68 degree, 5 minute, 35 second north east bearing. And again, it's northeast now because I'm looking B to A. When it was A to B, it was a southwest bearing, but B to A, 68 degree northeast. Now, given that, and I also know that the bearing from B to C is given to me, and you see this up here, is a north 19 degree 46 minute west bearing. So therefore I know this angle north to west right here is 19 degrees 46 minutes. So therefore I know that the angle that I turn is going to be equal to 360, this entire um, angle from this point side 
around to this side. So it would be 360 minus a small angle here minus this turned angle here. So that's, that's what I know. Um, and therefore, um, my, what, I, this, what I worked this out to be is my, this angle is 360. I, I just told you the wrong thing. I'll take a step back. This angle here will be the, the entire 360 degree angle minus this component which is 68 degrees, 5 minutes, 35 seconds, and this component, which is 19 degrees, 46 minutes. So that's what you see in this equation. This works out to tell me that I'm turning this angle 272 degrees, 8 minutes, 25 seconds clockwise. Again, hopefully if you draw this diagram fairly accurately, that should look about right, and it does. And always, you know, that's what I'm saying. When you write, when you draw diagrams, it really helps to take some time and effort to, and care so that you can use that as a way to almost check what you're getting from, from a calculations perspective. All right. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the problem, I said assume that my interior angles are balanced. So I could use these bearings and I could compute this angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle. And in this case, when I add those up, they do equal... Um, 360 degrees, which is what they should be equal to for a four-sided traverse. So in this situation, I've already balanced those angles. Remember, if you're working a problem and they haven't been balanced, what I need to do is sum these up, find how different they are from what they should be, and then basically distribute the error equally for each angle because there's no reason to believe that a angular, a horizontal angle error is any greater for one angle than another. There, you know, distance has no impact on that or magnitude has no impact on that. So, angles are balanced. Now I, now what I've done is the process of what the book calls computing my latitudes and departures. Really, the way to think about that, latitudes are how far you travel in the northing direction for a line segment. Departures are how far you travel in an easting direction for a, for a line segment. Um, I have no idea why latitudes and departures are the names that have been developed through the years, but that's what they are. Um, so, what we see here, this table, is they've made these, done these calculations, and the calculations are, are it's just trig. I have the length of the side, I have the bearing, and so I'm using sines and cosines to calculate the, the northing component and the easting component for each side. Now in this case, for example, it's a southwest bearing. Therefore, I know right off the bat, these are both going to be negative values. I'm going away from north, negative. I'm going away from east, negative. This bearing here at northwest, um, it'll be a positive um, value for the northing, a negative value for the easting. Northeast, both positive. Southeast, negative for the northing, positive for the easting. So that's all I'm doing is, is basically working with my signs, don't forget that, and then figuring out what these components are. And then again, don't forget to use common sense. If I have a relatively small um, northwest bearing, that means most of my travel is in the north direction, very little is in the west direction. And then you see that here, I have 200 feet of the 216 is in the northern direction, only 70, 73 feet is, is in the easting direction. So I basically take my traverse, I break it down each side into components, I sum these up, and that gives me my total, basically my total error, um, or my error of closure. So in other words, in order to close this traverse for point A where I start to be where point A is when I end, I am in this case 0 0.083 feet too far to the north, and I am 0 0.075 feet too far to the east. Since both of these are positive, it's too much northern too much easting. So that's my error. Okay. Um, now let's, in, in this next step, we'll show you how I calculated my latitudes and departures for one side, for C to D. So here you see C to D has a north 40, um, let me make sure I give you the right, go back to the figure. C to D has a north 45 degree, 55 minute, 20 second east bearing. Okay, so all I'm going to do is break it this in, into the easting component and the northern component. That's what I'm going to show you here below. So 
um, what I've drawn here. And again, diagrams make a big difference. I've drawn C to D. I've added my bearing. I've added my distance. And now I can compute my latitude and departure components. Um, here I've shown I've simply converted to decimal degrees. And now my latitude, um, the northern component from C to D, is going to be equal to this direct distance times the cosine of my um, my bearing, excuse me, um, and then my departure will be this value times the sine of my bearing. So um, that allows you to comp decompose it into these values, and that these values do match up with what was reported here in the table. Okay. Now, next question. What is the precision ratio of this survey? So again, the precision ratio is a measure of the quality of a survey. And basically, it's a ratio of the linear area of closure, or the total distance that I'm, that I'm, I'm missing my closure of a traverse, divided by the total perimeter, or the size of the traverse. So a linear area of closure is simply going to be the square root of the squares of the northern and eastern components. So in other words, 0.083 feet squared plus 0.07 feet, 0.75 feet squared, which again, you'll remember those values are my errors in each of these directions. So I find the total linear area of closure is 0.112 feet. Um, my total perimeter of my traverse is simply summing the, the value of the, the length of each side. In this case, 1,347 feet, and I divide the two. The nice thing about this is now I have a number, a metric I can use, no matter what the size of the traverse is, to give me a sense of the quality of the traverse. So, uh, and oftentimes, convention is I convert this into a one to something ratio. In other words, I take the inverse of the of the um, the fraction that I that I calculate. But so what I see here is this is a one to twelve thousand. Um, precision ratio okay and again that tells me something about the quality of my uh, my um, survey now we'll talk about this a bit more but you also see this in the book there are some accepted standards for precision ratios based on the kinds of surveys and essentially these get more restrictive as you um, have more uh, finer tuned applications so to speak so talking about an an urban requirement, which is some of the strictest requirements, you really should have a 1 to 10,000 precision ratio. In this case, we have a 1 to 12,000, which basically tells me, yes, this data is pretty accurate. It is okay to go ahead and adjust. And when I say adjust, I mean to make small changes to close the traverse and to try to accommodate for the random error that has to be in there. If I had found that my precision ratio is 1 to 5,000, then what I would say is, okay, this data is not good enough. I'm not going to adjust it. I'm going to send my surveyors back into the field and try to get a better quality survey. So that's what's going on here. So in this case, I can't adjust. Um, so now what I need to do is I say, OK, the question is, if, if I know the coordinate of point A is 58500 northing and easting, what is the adjusted coordinate of point B? And now what I'm going to do is apply what's called a compass rule. The compass rule is a pretty straightforward rule when you really think about it, and that is that I should distribute my linear error um, based on the length of each side. So in other words, I would expect longer sides to have more error, and that kind of makes sense when you think about total station and the parts per million of error as part of its accuracy. So what I'm doing here is I want to have adjusted uh, latitudes and departures from A to B. In, in this case, we're going to B. So we're holding point A constant, 58500. And I say, OK, the adjustment to the latitude for A, or the northern component, would be to take the negative 0 0.083. So remember, I was 0 0.083 feet too far to the north. So I want to pull the whole traverse down um, to the south, 0 0.083 feet. So my, uh, my adjustment total is negative 0.083, and I want to just th to move that totally that much. I only want to include the component for A to B of its ratio of A to B's length to the overall perim um, perimeter of the traverse. And I want to do the same thing when I talk about the easting component. 
because again I want to go to the west since I was 0.075 too far to the east. So what this tells me now is that my adjusted latitude and departure for A to B are these values. So I'm going to adjust them very, very slightly. And again, these adjustments are based on the, the, the percentage that that side plays in the overall perimeter of the traverse. So I take this adjustment. I, I add these to my originally calculated latitudes and departures. And these were given to you in the table above and find my new latitude and departure from A to B are these values here. Now I simply know that if I know the coordinates of A are 5,800 and I know that I've gone 176.386 feet to the south to get to um, from A to B and if I know the coordinate for A is 8,500 to the east and I have to travel 438.574 feet to the west I do this calculation and figure out these are the coordinates, my adjusted coordinates for point B. Okay, so I do that for every one of my points, and now I should have a traverse that is adjusted and, and should be closing. So that is adjusting a traverse um, using the compass rule. So I hope this example helped. Um, there are more examples in the book. You also can find more examples uh, online uh, on YouTube as well. So, uh, um, and this should help you uh, prepare for uh, the next class and to complete the homework. Um, thanks a lot.